So hi, Herbert here. Are you uh, writing in English like an eight-year-old kid? Watch this video and we can help you improve. Many of my students also write like this. In this episode, you will learn about transitional phrases, 50 words you probably already know but don't use to make your writing stand out. Here's how I learned about transitional phrases. In grade eight, my English teacher Gertrude Trapp taught us writing for two months. It was the best writing training we ever had. One of the things she taught us was how to use transitional phrases. Using transitional phrases correctly in your writing will really turn you from a so-so writer into an excellent writer, but you must learn how to use them properly. So watch this entire video so you can learn how to use each word in the correct way. Then practice using transitional phrases every day. First, what are transitional phrases? In English class, when your teacher gave you a writing assignment in writing class, you were told it must be 200 words or 300 words, some fixed number of words. So you grew up thinking words equals writing. Nothing could be further from the truth. You learned writing about the quantity, the number of words, not the quality of the words, how clear was the writing and how effective was the writing. Here is what writing actually is. Writing is using words to express an idea. Let me repeat that. Writing is using words to express an idea. Okay, so now that you understand that writing is about expressing ideas, you need words to help you do that. One set of words that can help you is uh, transitional phrases. Transitional phrases act as a bridge to connect your ideas and make your writing smooth and easy to understand. Let's get started. Okay, so here are the transitional phrases and I'm gonna show you how to use them. So transitional phrases, as I said, are very, very useful to make your writing sound much more adult-like. I've got this list of transitional phrases from a book called The Handbook for Writers, uh, published by Simon and Schuster. So if you want a reference book that explains a little bit more about transitional phrases, this is a very good handbook. Okay, so transitional phrases, actually you're quite familiar with them already, but you probably use the same ones over and over again. Well, for an English teacher, that's kind of boring. And actually for any reader, when you use the same words over and over again, it's very, very boring. Let me give you an example. When you want to connect uh, words or phrases or sentences, what's the most common word to connect? And. That's the only one we know. That's the only one that we use. Actually, we know quite a few words that we can replace and with, but we don't use them because we're lazy. So here are some transitional phrases that we can use in replacing and. So these are called addition transitional phrases. Addition transitional phrases are also, in addition, to, moreover, and, besides, furthermore, equally important, then, finally, and so. Next, we come to example. So instead of just saying, for example, all the time, you can say, for example, for instance, thus, as an illustration, namely, specifically. Now you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ways to say, for example. Next is emphasis. Now, when you were going to school, you learned about different punctuation, full stop, comma, semicolon, colon, question mark, and exclamation mark. And then when you got to work, you were told in business writing, you cannot use an exclamation mark. So how do you emphasize something? How do you make it stand out from the rest of the writing? You use transitional phrases for emphasis, and they are above all, at the same time, certainly, more important, indeed, surely, for one thing. Next is purpose. Purpose, there are only two transitional phrases you can use. For this purpose, for this reason. Next is contrast. Contrast is using to compare two different things. So even though it's contrast, you're using it to compare two different things. 
but, yet, however, on the one hand, on the other hand, nevertheless, nonetheless, conversely, in contrast, still, at the same time. Then we have comparison. Comparison is used for similar things. Similarly, likewise, in the same way, equally important. Next is something that's very important. This one is called concession. Now, you use concession uh, transitional phrases to give credibility or believability. Now, most of us, when we write a proposal or we're trying to solve a problem, we write our solution as if it's perfect and nothing could go wrong. If you want to make your uh, writing more, more believable, you should find a fault. You should find something wrong. You should find a minor flaw in the proposal that makes it more easy for the reader to believe. So, for example, let me give you an example. If a student of mine asked me to write a letter uh, saying they're a good student because they want to apply for a job, a reference letter, I could say, Jack is a very good student. He comes on time. He does his homework. Uh, he participates in class. He gave a very good presentation at the end of the class. So I think Jack is a very good student. He seems to be, to be very, very careful with his work. I think he would make a very good employee. Now, if you get that letter and you're the employer, you would kind of say, gee, Jack sounds like too good an employee. I can't believe that. But if I added a concession statement at the end and I said, but a Jack has a small habit that's a little bit inconvenient. He likes to whisper uh, things to other students in class from time to time. And that's a bit distracting. But I notice he, he has realized that this can be a distraction. So he has stopped doing this in the last few classes. So he seems to be aware of his own situation and he's willing to change. So I think Jack is very, very good that way also. Concession, transition phrases are... Of course, to be sure, certainly, granted, after all, at the same time, nevertheless, clearly. Next, we have result. Result collocations are, therefore, thus, as a result, so, accordingly, consequently. Summary. These are transitional phrases you would use at the end of your writing. Hence, in short, in brief, in summary, in conclusion, finally, in closing. Next, we have the time sequence transitional phrases. First, second, third, next, then, finally, afterwards, before, soon, later, meanwhile, subsequently, immediately, eventually, currently, and finally, place transitional phrases in the front, in the foreground, in the back, in the background, at the side, adjacent, nearby, in the distance, here, there. And those are all the transitional phrases you need to know to become an effective writer. I think there's like 50 or 52 altogether. Uh, one word of caution, some of the transitional phrases can be used for different purposes. So you need to be careful how you use them. Just watch that uh, when you're using them. But with practice, you'll be able to master the use of transitional phrases. Okay, so now that you know what transitional phrases are and how they're used, let me show you how to use them in your writing. For more details on writing, go to my video on Write With Power. After you've written your draft, look at the ideas you've written down. Then add the transitional phrases to transition from one idea to another. This is where you will add a transitional phrase. Add in the transitional phrases and then edit your writing. And then it should be outstanding. I've provided a link to download a worksheet with all the transitional phrases.